Hi, this is Pseudocode Lesson 3 by ITs Clear. We're going to cover while loops and repeat until loops. So in Pseudocode, you should already know all of these constructs, how to start and end a program, how to do input and output, an if um, statement, and a for loop. So today we're looking at repeat until loops. This is basically how it would look. You put the word repeat at the top, and then you put all the statements in the middle that you want to repeat, and then until, and then whatever the condition is at the bottom. It would be something like a is less than 100, or um, x equals 20, or something like that. Let's look at some examples. So if you want to ensure that a user inputs the correct password, you could use a program like this. Program input password, correct pw equals abc123, repeat, then you indent whatever's inside the repeat loop. So you put input password, then until password equals correct pw and end the program. So you can see that um, you set a variable called correct pw equals abc123 at the top. Then you will repeat asking the user to input his password until he has inputted the same abc123 password. If he doesn't, he's going to get stuck inside this loop because he doesn't know the right password. Here's an exercise for you to practice with. Write pseudocode to do the following. Generate a random number between 1 and 10. The user must repeatedly input a number until he guesses the number which was generated. So you've got, um, this is just a line that I've put here so you can know how to generate a random number. It's basically a, an English description which is allowed in pseudocode. So random number equals generate random number between 1 and 10. So you will use this blue line of code inside your pseudocode. Please pause the, the video now and I will show you the solution. But please do try this out. It's very good for you to practice your pseudocode. So program guess random. Random num equals generate random number between 1 and 10. Repeat input guess number until random number equals guess number end. So the other kind of um, conditional loop is called a while loop. In this one, we put the condition at the top. So if the condition is false, you may never go into the loop. You may never repeat the loop. So this is like how it looks. While, condition, do, then your statements that need to be repeated, and in while. So on the right, I've put it in flowchart form. You could say, while A is true, do B. B would be some statements that need to be executed, and end while. So you can see it's a question at the top. If A is true, then you keep on repeating the loop until A becomes false. Here's an example. Um, program 1 to 5, number equals 1. While number is less than 6, do. Print number, number equals number plus 1. End while and end. So let's ha look at the, how the variables change. Well, there's only one variable. And how, what output we will get. So at the beginning, we get number equal to 1. Then we say, while number is less than 6, do. Well, 1 is less than 6, so we do execute the, the, the statements inside the while. So print number, we're going to print a 1. Then number equals number plus 1, so number becomes 2. We get to the end while, so we are now going to go back to the top of the loop and test. While number is less than 6, well, 2 is less than 6, so we then print the number again. So we print the 2. 
and then number equals number plus one, so number becomes three. And while we go back to the top of the loop, three is less than six, so we print the three, print number, then number equals number plus one, so the three becomes a four. And while, go back to the top of the loop, you can see how it continues. We eventually get number two is five, number is still less than six, so we repeat the loop again and print the five, then the number becomes six. We then go back to the top of the loop while number is less than six. So six is not less than six. So now the loop ends and we are going to um, skip the statements inside the loop and go to under the loop because six is not less than six. Here's an exercise for you to try. Write pseudocode to print all the multiples of 3 from 3 to 35. Call the program multiples 3. So the best for you to do is to set a variable equal to 3 at the top of the program and then use a while loop. And um, you will need to increment your variable by 3 every time. So we've got program multiples 3, number equals 3, while number is less than or equal to 35, do, and then print number, number equals number plus 3, and end while and end. So this time instead of number equals number plus 1, we've got number equals number plus 3. There's another exercise. Write pseudocode to input an unknown quantity of positive numbers and then output the biggest number inputted. The program must end when a negative number is inputted. Call the program biggest num. So please write the pseudocode out and pause the video here and I will then show you the solution on the next slide. So we've got program biggest num, biggest equals zero, repeat input number, if number is greater than biggest, biggest equals number, end if, until number is less than zero, then print biggest. So you can see that we repeat the loop until the number becomes less than zero or until somebody inputs a number less than zero. Here's a question from one of the exam papers in IGCSE, Computer Science. Read this section of program code that inputs 10 positive numbers and then outputs the smallest number input. So we've got small equals 1,000, counter equals zero, repeat, input num, if num is less than small, then small equals num, counter equals counter plus 1, until counter equals 10, then print small. So identify three changes you would need to make to find the largest number input instead of the smallest number. And I'll let you do that on your own. Then I've got another exercise. Write a pseudocode program to input a number and to count the number of digits in the number. Call it count digits. And there's a hint, input the number at the top of your program. Then use a repeat until loop in which you divide the number by 10 repeatedly. So the number at the bottom would have seven digits. You can see that if you divide a number by 10 repeatedly, you'll eventually get up to a point where you get naught point. And then you could have counted the digits while you did that. Um, so the solution is coming up now. Program count digits. Input number. Count equals zero. Repeat number equals number divided by 10. Count equals count plus one. Until number is less than one. 
print, the number of digits is count and end. So you can see that every time we go around the loop, we will divide the number by 10. Um, so if we started off with a number like 123, 123 divided by 10 will give us 12. Then 12 divided 12 comma 3, 12 divided comma 3 divided by 10 will give us 12, 1 comma 2 3, and eventually we'll get to 0 comma 1 2 3, and then the number will be less than 1, and we will have counted the digits. Here's another exercise from the 2015 paper 2. Jatinda uses internet banking, and this pseudocode checks her PIN. So we've got C equals 0, input PIN, X equals PIN, repeat, X equals X divided by 10, C equals C plus 1 until X is less than 1. If C is not equal to 5, then print error in PIN entered, else print PIN OK. And you can try this one out on your own. So... That's all for today. Please keep practicing. That's how you get good at pseudocode. Thanks for watching.